Franken Tune Franken Tune Studio Hello and welcome. This is Enrique from Franken Tune Studio. Today we're gonna learn how to turn a farting flat logo like this one into a powerful semi-realistic graphic using only one texture. We've prepared some work files including an affinity file and a texture which you can download from the link in the description. This tutorial can be perfectly followed using Affinity Photo. The reason I'm using Affinity Designer here is because, well, it was the app I launched first. The beauty of Affinity apps is that you can go back and forth between them without worrying which app you started working with in the first place. To get started, let's import our texture. Make sure you're placing the texture on the layer name Background Overlay. Let's center this image by clicking the Align Center and Align Middle buttons from the Context menu. I'm gonna dim its opacity just a little bit. 75% should work fine. Duplicate this texture and place it above our vector graphic. Then, let's contract and lock the background overlay layer since we won't be touching it anymore. Let's go back to our texture, reset its opacity to 100%. This is gonna be our mask. We need to adjust our texture using a levels adjustment, otherwise our mask will make our graphic barely visible, <laughs> like this. Remember, when creating masks, pure white means full opacity while pure black means full transparency. All gray values in between will translate into different levels of opacity. We're gonna move the white and gamma sliders to the left to have enough room to make our graphic readable enough when masked. Let's move the black slider to the right to make sure all darker parts are pure black, especially the cracks on the asphalt. Now select both layers and group them. Right click on this group and choose Rasterize to Mask from the popover. Click and drag this Rasterize layer next to the bottom layer's thumbnail to get it applied as a mask. Now we're gonna inject some thickness into our main graphic to make it look more like if it was made out of actual paint. We'll be using a bevel and emboss layer effect to accomplish that. Select emboss for the type, set radius at 1 pixel, azimuth 90 degrees, and elevation at 25 degrees. Leave the default settings for highlights and shadows. As you can see, this is a very subtle effect. However, these tiny details can add that extra something that would trick your audience's eyes into really believe that they are looking at something real and three-dimensional in front of them. I'm gonna quickly activate and deactivate the effect so you can see the difference. Barely noticeable, I know, but powerful to the viewer's brain, if that makes sense to you. Our graphic looks good already, but we're gonna switch to Affinity Photo to add some extra effects and make it look even more realistic. First, I'll be adding a lighting filter. Gonna move it to the top so it affects all layers. For this particular image, I'll be using 100% for diffuse, 75 for specular and for shininess as well. Ambient light, 30%, distance, 45%, azimuth, 85%. I'll leave Elevation, Outer Cone and Inner Cone as default. The most important step here is to add a bump map to create a pseudo 3D effect. Would you guess which image we're going to use here? That's correct, the same asphalt texture from before. I'll be setting this texture's value at minus 0.8. You can play with this value here to find out what looks better for you. As you can see, the difference of using or not a bump map when texturing images is night and day. The trick to make our final graphic believable 
is to use the same texture as background for masking and as a bump map. To give our final graphic a more photographic look, I'm going to add a depth of field light filter to simulate some camera lens defocus. Here, I'm just going to tweak two settings. First, I'm going to tick Preserve Alpha and going to set the blur radius to about 6 degrees. I'm going to exaggerate the radius here just to show you how extreme you can get. It looks pretty damn cool, actually. Let's leave it at 6.5 degrees, nonetheless. Now, I'm going to modify the ellipsis aspect ratio to match a rectangular document. Okay, this looks about right. As you can see, this method is super simple once you get the hang of it. After trying different techniques, this is the one of the easiest pipelines I've found to add instant realism and visual punch to flat vector graphics. This has been a great selling point for me in the past, when presenting low design mockups and its application to different media and surfaces to clients. It makes your design look more tangible and real before it gets even approved. Today, we've seen a quite extreme example, but this works great using more subtle textures as well, such as wood, concrete, paper, metal, and so on. I hope you have enjoyed this quick tutorial. If so, please like this video and let us know what would you like to see next in the comments section. Thank you for watching. Franken two Franken two Franken two Franken two Franken two Franken